<clears throat> okay, in this video we're going to look at this differential equation, y double prime equals y. So this is solvable uh, pretty simply using the method of homogeneous uh, second order linear differential equations with constant coefficients. So if you look at this, maybe you know that the solution sh should be of the form of something, so I won't give that away. But in this video, we're going to look at a solution using a power series just as practice for finding power series solutions to differential equations. So uh, we'll get that started by setting y equal to, so this will be the sum n equals 0 to infinity of a sub n x to the n. And so we're going to need y prime. So this will be the sum 1 to infinity of n a n x to the n minus 1. So I did term by term differentiation here. But notice when the n came out front, I no longer need the n equals 0 term because that would give me 0. Um, and then y double prime, which is the one that we actually need for our, cal our calculations. So that's the sum n equals 2 to infinity of n times n minus 1, a sub n, x to the n minus 2. And again, I cut out the n equals 1 term here because that would give us 0 again. And again, I did term by term differentiation from one step to the next. Okay, great. So now we're set up. We've got all the parts of our differential equation, y double prime and y prime. And so now we can set up uh, an equation involving series in order to solve for the coefficients. So our equation involving series will be as follows. So we have the sum n equals 2 to infinity of n times n minus 1 x to the n minus 2. Um, minus the sum n equals 0 to infinity of a sub n x to the n equals 0. And so I've done a little bit of rearranging here. This is actually the differential equation given by y double prime minus y equals 0. So we have y double prime minus y just to um, make our calculations a little bit simpler and a little bit more universal for more complicated uh, series solutions. Okay, so the next thing we want to do is re-index this first series so that we can combine it with the second series. So let's see, in this case, we're going to make the following replacement. We'll replace every um, spot where we see n with n plus 2. And so really what we're motivated by here is we want to replace n minus 2 with n, but that's obviously the same thing as scaling it up this other way. But I'll write that down just as what we're thinking about. n minus 2 is being replaced with n. <clears throat> So, now notice, when n is equal to 2 in the old indexing, it will be equal to 0 in the new indexing. Um, and then, well, these parts will change as well. So, uh, let's see how that goes. So, like I said, this will be the sum n equals 0 to infinity of, and so we're, place, we're placing n with n plus 2, so that's going to give us n plus 2. And so if we're replacing n with n plus 2, then n minus 1 will be n plus 1. And now that makes sense because this is a falling product, n times the one previous. Now we have n plus 2 times the one previous. Um, oh, and I noticed that here I left out my a sub n, so I'll put that back in. And now I have a sub n plus 2 there. And then I have x to the n. Okay, great. And now from here I have this is minus the sum n equals 0 to infinity of a sub n x to the n equals 0. Okay, so now that we've re-indexed this in a way that um, each series has the same power of x, we can mash these series together. So that tells us the following. So we have the sum n equals 0 to infinity of n plus 2 times n plus 1 times a sub n plus 2 
minus a sub n, this whole thing, times x to the n equals zero. So notice what I did is I took the coefficient of x to the n in my first series, the coefficient of x to the n in my second series, and I just put them together, all multiplied by x to the n. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll start from this point and work towards solution. Okay, so let's pick up where we left off. We have this series is identically equal to zero. So we have n plus two times n plus one, the n plus two coefficient of the original series minus the nth coefficient of the original series. So that whole thing is equal to zero. But a power series is identically equal to zero only when all the coefficients are identically equal to zero. So that means we have all of these equations for the coefficients. Okay, good. So uh, let's look what this, let's see what this tells us and then um, see if we can get a solution. So this tells us that, uh, I'm going to rewrite this as follows. This tells us a n plus 2 equals 1 over n plus 2 times n plus 1 times a n. Good. And that is for all n bigger than or equal to zero. Okay, so uh, let's see where we can go from here. So notice this naturally splits these things into even and odd numbers because this equation doesn't tell us any information. So no information about a zero or a one. So that tells us that a zero will just be equal to a zero. A one will be equal to a one. And then let's go here from here. So a two, so notice that's gonna be equal to one over two times one times a zero. And now we have a sub three, so what will that be? So that's going to be one over, let's see what we get, that's gonna be three times two, a one. Okay, good. And now here we have a sub four equals so that's going to be 1 over 4 times 3, a 2. But that's going to be equal to 1 over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 times a 0. Good. And then next we have a 5. So that'll be 1 over... 5 times 4 times a 3, but that's 1 over 5 times 4 times 3 times 2, a 1. And so on and so forth. So as you can see, it looks like both of these um, are of the form 1 over n factorial. So I'll clean up the board and then we'll finish off the uh, rest of the calculation. Okay, so let's recall that our recursion were, was as of the following. So we have a plus a n sub two, sorry, a sub n plus two is one over n plus two times n plus one times a sub n. And no, not, notice that tells us that a zero and a one are free in a sense. So they're going to be related to the initial conditions if we had initial conditions. Um, and now, I won't do this explicitly in this case, but I have a previous video where we solved y prime equals y using power series solutions where I proved by induction what the um, coefficients look like, but we provided some evidence before I erased the board for the following. So that was a sub n plus 2. Um, <clears throat> equals 1 over n plus 2 factorial times a sub 0 if n was even and uh, a sub n plus 2 equals 1 over n plus 2 factorial a sub 1 if n was odd. Okay, 
good. So now notice that tells us that the power series solution is as follows. So this is equal to the sum from n equals zero to infinity over the even terms of a sub zero, one over n factorial x to the n, good, and then plus a sub one times the sum n equals one to infinity over the odd terms of one over n factorial a sub n. Okay, so now in order to put this in terms of something that's a little bit more familiar, I'm going to make the following change of variables on the coefficients a0 and a1, and that is as follows. So let's set um, a0 equal to c0 plus c1, and a1 equal to c0 minus c1. So notice we don't lose any information here. Uh, we still have two degrees of freedom. So that's going to allow us to write this as follows. So this is the sum over C0 plus C1 times the sum of the even terms, 1 over n factorial x to the n, plus uh, C0 minus C1, and then the sum over all of the odd terms, uh, 1 over n factorial x to the n. Okay, great. So that allows us to put this following together. So notice we can combine the C0 terms, and that will give us C0 times the sum of all of the terms, so x to the n over n factorial. And then if we combine the C1 terms, notice for the even terms, we get a positive one. For the odd terms, we get a negative one. But we can encode that in the series as follows. So this is C1, and then the sum negative one to the n of x to the n over n factorial. And again, this is n equals zero to infinity. And now these should look more familiar. So the first one is equal to C0 e to the x. And then the second one is equal to c1 e to the minus x, which if you recall the standard method for solving homogeneous second order differential equations, this is the solution that we expect.